Well, if you have been in a season of waiting, uh, this episode is just for you. I'll be back with God is Working in Your Waiting. Well, today on Bridges, it's God is Working in Your Waiting. I'm Monica Schmelter, and you are watching or listening to Bridges podcast or by TV. And I'm just so glad that you could join me. If I'm honest, um, I don't like waiting. I've never met anyone who says that they like waiting, whether it's a long line in the grocery store or waiting to hear about a job. And really, when you look in the Bible, there are so many examples of great heroes of the faith. They had long, long seasons of waiting. And I hope that that will bring comfort to you as it does to me that God is working in our waiting. It's not just waiting for no reason. For example, look at how long Abraham and Sarah waited for a son. Joseph in the pit, and people all, always talk about, well, pit to the palace. But the thing is, that was a long period of time. That was a long wait in which God was working in Joseph's life to make him the man of character that he was. Moses waited to lead the Israelites out of slavery. Joshua waited for the promised land. Ruth waited for a husband. David waited to become king. Elijah waited for rain. Job waited for the suffering to end. What Job went through, my goodness. And Paul, he waited for release from prison. So I ask you, what are you waiting for? What is it that you want to happen or you think that God is leading you to do? And yet it seems that between what you know and what needs to be here, that there's a wait. I can tell you that for me, I'm waiting. I've been praying for one particular prodigal for 17 years. That's a long wait. I have not seen one iota of change in this person. Um, they're tough. And I keep praying for the kindness of God to lead them to repentance. 17 years is a long time to pray. But I remind myself that God is working in my waiting. And as I wait, he's building my trust. He's building my character. And I want to encourage you that if you're waiting, like you've done everything that you can to get that job, or you've done everything that you can to get this amount of money saved that you need, know that God is working in your waiting. And know that truth number one for today is that waiting is a universal experience. Everybody at some point waits. Jesus, think about him. He waited. He had to wait for his disciples. He waited for crowds. He waited for his parents. He waited for the crucifixion. He knew that was coming, but he had to wait. It didn't happen immediately. His life, his death, his resurrection, they are all beautiful pictures of waiting. And so while our human nature is adverse to waiting, you know, our human nature is we want it and we want it now. And our culture promotes everything instantaneous and we can't help it in some ways because this is where we live and we think everything should be quick and in a hurry. Uh, if we send a text to somebody, they better answer right away. We have all of these expectations. We don't want to wait. And yet, there are so many pictures in the Bible of people waiting. I want to read Revelation 3.20 for you for just a moment, and I'll read it out of the New Living Translation. And this is Jesus, and he says, Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in, and we will share a meal together as friends. That scripture is a picture of Jesus waiting on us. He's saying, I'm knocking at the door of your heart. I'm asking you to open it so that we can share a meal as friends. We're not just servants. He calls us his friends and he's waiting for us to respond to him. And I know probably in your life and I know in mine, sometimes I get so busy that I don't realize he's waiting on me. I think I've got my to-do list and I wanna get through that list. I wanna answer those emails as quickly as I can because I'm afraid I'll forget if I don't do it right that second. 
and people are texting and people are calling and it's like that for you, I'm sure, whatever your career is. Even if you're a stay-at-home mom, there are tons of things that need to be done. And in the daily responsibilities of life and in our busy, we can forget that Jesus, the Son of God, the one who is at the right hand of the Father right now, interceding for you and for me, he's waiting. He's waiting for us to open the door. So when we say, oh my goodness, I've been waiting so long for this or that, think about how long he's been waiting on me. Think about how long he's been waiting on you to kind of put down those burdens, to put down those responsibilities just for a period of time and just bask in his presence as his friend. So think about what you're waiting for. I've got some resources up on the website, bridgeswithmonica.com that'll kind of walk you through waiting, the process, some scriptures uh, that might help you. You don't have to sign up for anything. It's just a free download. Truth number two that we'll look at today is wait, waiting increases trust. And we all know that in our human nature, most of us want to control our lives. We, we think we have some semblance of control over it all. I consider myself like just a control freak in some ways. I say that I trust him, right? And then yet I'll give him something, some burden, and then I take it back and I try to work that thing out. And what God is saying to me is, Monica, I want you to trust what you can't see. I want you to trust that I've got it. You think about the scripture in the book of Proverbs that says, you know, to not lean on your own understanding. It says to acknowledge him in all of your ways. And so, so many times we are so busy that we're not acknowledging him in our ways and therefore we're not getting the answers. We're not getting the direction because our head and our heart are someplace far away. Waiting helps us see that we're not in control. Think about this. How many times have you planned your day out? You're gonna go, uh, pay this bill, go to the grocery store, and you think, well, I'll be home by four o'clock. Oh, but no, because the grocery store is really busy and every cashier has a long line. And while that irritates us and while that can be frustrating, it reminds us that we are not in control. And that's a grocery store story, but goodness, I've had it where I'm on the way to the airport and I allowed ample time, margin time, right? and the traffic is so bad or there's an accident and I can't get where I need to be. We all have these experiences and while we get frustrated about them and we may get angry, sometimes if we can just stop ourselves and say, I just wanna acknowledge God in all of this. I just wanna handle this honorably and with character and instead of that complaining and instead of that worrying and all the things that we do because we're people, to say, God, I trust you. If you don't make the airport in time and you miss the flight because there's an accident or whatever, you can trust that God is working in your waiting. We do not control every aspect of our lives. We would like to, I plan my days, I plan my weeks and yes, of course, I pray about those things, but you know and I know that we sort of just get our arms around something and we just know how it's supposed to go. And how many times over and over God shows me, that's not how that's supposed to go. You need to let that go. I had someone tell me once, and I've held on to it for many years, when it comes to the Lord and the things that we do for Him in our lives, that we should hold everything really loosely in our hands so that if he changes our season or he takes something or he adds something, that we can be flexible instead of control freaks. Uh, I've heard people say many times, blessed are the flexible, they shall not break. And I think, am I flexible? Sometimes, but sometimes not. Sometimes I just want it to go the way I want it to go. Waiting increases trust. Even if you've got a great education and a great resume, you may wait a long time until that job that you want comes. And what is that wait about? And what is God wanting to teach you in that wait? Probably as God is working in your wait, he's teaching you 
to trust him. He's teaching you that he's got it. He promises us that when we love him and when we are called according to his purpose, that he works everything out for our good. Now, we don't see the end product, right? We see the process. We see this and that and this and that. But God is not restricted by time. So he sees the end of the matter while he also sees the beginning and he sees the middle and all of that in between. But as people, right, he's just asking us to trust because we don't see it. And I've heard people say that sometimes after a trial, you know, they know why they went through it. I can share honestly, there have been many trials that I don't know why that happened. I don't think God made that bad thing happen. I may not know the why, but I can say that I trust him through it and that somehow he's going to bring good. He promises that even the things that are meant for evil in our life, that he's going to work them for good. So in this weight that you have, like whatever that big thing is for you or small things, I hope that you will rest knowing that God is working in your waiting. There are couples, married couples that want to have a baby and there's a long wait. You know, that can be really hard. We're people and it's okay to acknowledge that. I know a young lady, 14 years she prayed for a baby. Now she has three, but 14 years she prayed for that first one. And my heart would go out to her at every baby shower that I would see her at for other people. But she did her best to celebrate other people's joys and victories in their baby showers. And I remember she gave someone a baby shower and it was the most magnificent baby shower. It looked as beautiful as any wedding could be. She put her whole heart and soul into it. And then afterwards she cried really hard because she just was like, I don't know if I'm ever going to have a baby, but now she has three and she's quite busy with those three littles, but her wait was long and she's grateful. There can be waiting, you know, to marry the right person. And in that wait, there can be so much pressure. It's like when a person's single, people say, well, when are you going to get married? You get married and people say, well, when are you guys going to have kids? There's a lot of pressure in our culture that things have to be done a certain way and in a certain order. And the only things that have to be done in a certain way, in a certain order is obeying God. It's not that you have to follow like a ritual of, okay, well, I got out of college, so now I get this great job and then I get married. There might be a wait. I have a particular friend who has, she has a fabulous career. She's been a Christian since she was a little girl and she didn't meet Mr. Wright until she was 46. And while, you know, that people may think, well, that's old to get married. It's not. She waited for the right person and she's just madly in love with her husband and they have a wonderful life. And she always says to me, Monica, it was worth the wait. And she recognizes that God was working in her wait, making her a woman of more character, teaching her patience, allowing her to just overcome that sense of, I've got to do things in the way that everybody else is doing them. We tell kids all the time, well, you don't have to do what everybody else does. And yet as adults and even in the church, that's kind of what we model, like what everybody else does. What's important is that you obey God and that I obey God and that we trust him however our life unfolds. It can be, you know, breaking up. Everybody else is getting engaged and married and like you're not. And so that's long. I shared with you earlier, waiting for a prodigal. I'm going to tell you this prodigal I've been waiting for for 17 years. Honestly, sometimes I say, God, can this be over? I have watched this person make bad decisions. I've watched them get sick. Uh, because of some of their bad decisions, because they get altered, you know, with drugs and alcohol, whatever. And it's like, I just want that person to be saved now. I just want them to see the joy of the Lord, but I trust that God is working. I don't know how, maybe he's putting people in that person's life. Maybe he's giving them dreams and visions. God can totally do that, whatever. But I have to say to the Lord, However you do this, that's the right way. 
And when we understand that our waiting can increase our trust, it gives us time to get to know the Lord better. You know, a lot of people think, well, God is mad at me. I did this. Look at God as an angry God. God is not angry with any of us. He doesn't like sin. We know that, but he is not angry with us. He loves us. He wants the best for us. The Bible even says it's his kindness that leads us to repentance. It's not the letter of the law. It's his kindness. It's his son, Jesus. He loves us and he wants us to come to him. And he wants us to trust him in our wait. Instead of thinking that he's withholding good or that he's being cruel to you because the wait to have a baby is long or the wait to get married or whatever that is, people can get mad and disappointed at God because of unmet expectations. I think that's why some people walk away from the Lord and they deconstruct their faith in a dangerous way because they wanted things to happen in a certain way. And when they don't, they just can't figure it out. Like, well, why did that happen? And how did that happen? And I, I wanna say this, I don't know that on this side of heaven, we will always know all of the whys and all of the hows, and that's okay. It's really okay because we know the Savior. We know the one who, wa who was, who is, and who is to come. We know the Alpha and the Omega. We know that. We know that. We know the creator of the universe. We know that we're made in his image. We know that he loves us. We are sons and we are daughters. And whatever that situation is in which we are waiting, I promise you that his word says he is working it all out for our good. He's doing something wonderful. And you might not see it for five years. And if you say, Monica, that's too long. I know, I agree that it's too long. I think 17 years is too long to pray for a prodigal. But here's the thing. I absolutely will not give up. And I won't give up because God's word says that it is his will that none would perish, but that everyone would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It says that he's not slack concerning his promises, but that he is patient waiting for all to repent. That's what he wants. So when you're waiting and in your wait, you are praying the will of God and you are obeying the Bible as best you can, you can rest knowing that God is working in your waiting. One of the things that you have to ask yourself is, are you willing, right, to see waiting as an opportunity to strengthen your faith in Christ. And I've got an exercise up on the website that will kind of help you outline that out and really look at it and be brave enough to say, God, I just believe you. If you're working in this season to build my strength and my faith, let's do that. You know, there's been a couple of times that I've gone through some things and I think, okay, God, uh, you've been working on my character for like a long time. And that person over here, they don't have much character. Could you go over there and work? And God knows that's ridiculous. And I know that's ridiculous, but we all feel that way. It's like, you know, I just don't want to go through this. I just want everything to be okay. And yet in this wait, in this time that there is space between where we are now and where we want to get to, God is working in our waiting doesn't matter whether you see it or you don't. His word says that he delights in our details. His word says that he orders our steps. It may not seem like he ordered your steps. You may be, you know, a loss of job or a broken marriage and think, you know, how did this happen? Um, and again, people may offer you explanations and God bless them. I'm sure that they're well-intended, but honestly, we don't know why everything in life happens. It's about trust. It's about trusting the one who created us in his image. It's about trusting the one who gave his one and only son for us. You think about that. If you have children, how much that we love our children, I would never want anyone uh, to treat my son the way that Jesus got treated. I mean, he went through so much to redeem us and to restore our lives. He was physically beaten. I'm mean, just think about what he's done. And he didn't do all of that 
because he's mad at us and because he's trying to be mean to us in our weight, he did not. He really, he stands at the door of our heart and he knocks and he says, you know, if you'll just open up and let me in, we can share a meal as friends. You know, so many times people try to be with a certain group of people or to meet a certain whatever, celebrity, whatever, and we don't realize that the creator of the universe is waiting for us. He's waiting for us to make, be fully committed, wholeheartedly committed to him and to say, God, however you want to work all of this out, I'm okay. And you know, sometimes like in worship service and in, in all those beautiful songs that we sing to the Lord, it's, you know, it's easier to say I surrender all, but it's really hard when you lost a job or when something happens that you don't understand or there's a loss or you prayed for someone to be healed and it didn't happen the way you prayed, it's harder in those situations to say, I surrender all. I have a very good friend who lost her husband and she's a widow like at 55 years old and that's young to be a widow. And her husband was young. And they just said he died of natural causes. It was just a sudden thing. She has to trust the Lord, right? We don't know why or how. There's no explanation. There's not a word that I can say to her that's going to make the pain of that loss go away. All I can do is be her friend and offer her comfort. I don't offer her explanations. I don't say, oh, blah, blah, blah. I just say, I'm here for you. If you wanna cry, if you wanna scream, you just go ahead and do that because I understand. So. We have to give up trying to make sense of everything because sometimes on this side of heaven, it just doesn't make sense. When we get to the end of our abilities, it can be a great reminder to focus on God. Let's, let me read to you Psalm 62 verse five out of the New Living Translation. And it says there, let all that I am wait quietly before God for my hope is in him. So let's talk about quiet for just a minute. Isn't it really hard to have quiet? I mean, everywhere you go, there is so much noise, so much noise. Our phones are going off, kids, grandkids, like there's just all these things, places we have to be. And yet this verse says, let everything that I am wait quietly for the Lord because our hope is in him. That thing that you're waiting for, that situation that you want to be over, the only hope for all of that is Him. It's His ways, it's His plan, and He will work it out as we trust Him. Truth number three for today is waiting underscores our limits. John 15, five out of the New Living Translation says it like this, yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I and them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Now, we see that there are people who aren't trusting God who accomplish things and they do things, but they're not doing them in God's plan. This scripture says we have limits. We can do nothing without Him. Anything that we do apart from Him is not something that's permanent. You know, and I know, because I've tried to fix situations and it seems like it works maybe like for a day and then it all falls apart and it's worse than what it was because I got involved in something I didn't need to be involved in. And so he says, apart from him, we can do nothing. So we have to remember that as human beings, we have limits. And where our limits and where our abilities stop is where the supernatural power of God, the Holy Spirit works in our waiting. Waiting prompts us to understand and to recognize our limitations. The Bible says, right, that we are strong in Christ. It says where we are weak, right? His strength is made perfect in our weakness. And we go around and try to prove how strong that we are, right? We want to show people that we're strong. But the thing is, apart from Him, we can do nothing. But through Him and through His power, He gives us everything that we need for life, for holiness, which means that we can obey him. No matter how 
much culture talk and trash that there is, the temptations that are out there, all the things. For everyone that is a believer in Christ, he gives us everything that we need to obey him, to live a life that is set apart from the evil in the world. And I don't think that means that we don't talk to unsaved people. I mean, how will people ever get saved if we don't? I'm talking about in my life, I live a set apart life to the Lord because I belong to him and I trust and I obey when I can't see a thing, right? Because I know that God is working in my waiting. So I want to take just a moment to pray for you in your wait, that God will show you all the things that he wants you to learn and all the things that he wants to give you in what can be a really hard season of life. Father, I come to you in Jesus' name, and I thank you for everybody that's watching and for all those that are listening, and God, for everybody that's waiting, and they don't know whether they're to move here or there or what to do next. I ask in Jesus' name that you would delight in their details. I ask in Jesus' name that you would order their steps and show them, Father, how when we love you and when we are called according to your purpose, that you promise to work everything out for our good. God, teach us all the things that you want us to know in our waiting. We know that you are a good father and we know that you have good things for us. So Father, teach us what we need to know in this period of waiting. And I pray that in Jesus' name, amen. And I just wanna encourage you and me today that God is working in our waiting and I truly believe, I've seen it time and time again in my life, God does his best work when I'm in the dark. He shows up the most when I have absolutely no idea what is going on, what's going to happen next. He just somehow, some way gets in there and works it out in a way that I could never think, imagine, or orchestrate. So trust him and serve him wholeheartedly. I appreciate you watching today. I have all the notes, the show notes on the website, bridgeswithmonica.com. And we're almost out of time, but I thank you so much uh, for joining me. And I will be back with you the next time on Bridges and we will have more hope for the journey. Life can be hard and days can be long. So if you're looking for hope for the journey, monicaschmelter.com is a great place to get started. On monicaschmelter.com, you'll find Monica's teachings on demand. And if you're looking to really grow your faith, you'll find online extras are available with every teaching. So don't wait another day. Get started now at monicaschmelter.com and you will find hope for the journey. Finding hope in today's life is not always easy. Bridges with Monica Schmelter is making it simple. You can now listen to podcast episodes on popular platforms like iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Life Audio, and more by searching for Monica Schmelter to find God's hope for your journey.